Hey, nerdlings. What up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for cosplay panels? So learn to airbrush with Bruce Holt. Um, these range from about... Thank you. All these you can... Probably $139 and up. And you can get into a very expensive one. You don't need to start out with this. And what I like about dual action is you can get the hair flowing before you start painting. Uh, on a single action airbrush, when you push down, things can come up. So, you know, if you're covering a big area and stuff like that, single action is fine. If you can get into airbrushing, they, they get a single action because it's 35 bucks, and then they go over and they get a little tiny and and stuff like that. And it, it's, it's so much harder to do with a single action. Um, and then, also, I like my detail. Uh, this one right here is actually a cosmetic airbrush. But you notice the little teeny cap on it. I love that little teeny cap because that's from a little bit of paint in an airbrush goes a long way. That that whole arm piece that you saw, I painted out of this. And so because it's, I started out with uh, Do you think they care if we shut the door? Do they uh, say anything? I'd like it to be. It's really noisy out better. there. Oh, so much better. Okay, you can buy kits like this. Uh, it, it comes with several different colors. And this one, I like. It has a real chrome in it. And you can paint. It's, oh, sorry. This one, this one right here. If you do a right finish underneath it, when you paint this on it, it looks like chrome. You can hold it up against a piece of chrome, and it looks like chrome. Uh, and I'm not saying it just looks really good silver. It, it has all the reflections and everything of chrome. This kit right here, um, I get from West Coast Airbrush, and it sells for about 158 bucks. Which sounds like a lot of money, but this right here, I can't tell you everything that's in my booth right now. I could repaint with this kit and still have 75% of it left over. So uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's a bargain. And I'm not selling for these people, it's just I really like them. They, they treat me well, they ship it out to me. Um, and they have to ship this ground because it's flammable, they can't ship it air. And I still get it within like four days. So uh, the only thing is, is if you go to a West Coast Airbrush, um, make sure they have it in stock. Because sometimes, especially these kids, are really, really popular. You can ask me questions if you want to while I'm doing this. It's going to take me just a second. First off, when you're mixing airbrush paints, it's about a um, two to one mix, two parts paint, one, one part thinner, and you can increase from there. I would start with, with less of, of your reducer and go up from there, especially if you do using the Createx paints. The Createx is a very, very, very forgiving, forgiving paint. So if you get too much, yeah, you're going to get what's called spidery. And that's when you start and you just get all these legs that come up. You're probably too thin or you're, uh, well, basically it's just because you've got too much reducer. Uh, this stuff you can get at Hobby Lobby, right? This is a high performance reducer with the Createx paints, right? And like I said, you're using very little of it, so something like this lasts you quite a while. I've, I've had this one for two months, and you can see I've still got that much left. And I've done a lot of painting lately <laughs> with this. 
And they have additives that uh, bleed for bleed of other colors and stuff like that. That's what another thing I like about Creatrix paint is it really doesn't bleed. Um, so you can have a color underneath and put a color on top that's not going to bleed through. Um, and transparent paints, or you've got opaque paints and then translucent paints. Okay, opaque will be a solid color and translucent can go on top of that. And you might see, trying to figure out how they do a, a flame work or something like that. And how do they get those brilliant colors to come up? They usually start with white and then they put a transparent color on top of that, a transparent orange on top of that. So they can go on black surfaces and, and paint all of these white lines and then they come back in and they just really quick go over them with the, the translucent paints, which I'm going to demonstrate some of that here in just a minute. So I've actually got um, somebody I've been helping with the costume and she, she brought it in, it's right here. And this is where this is where airbrushing is really, really, really fun to do because to to do weathering on this, I mean, you can do this from like the um, Ethan Ted or whatever shows with brush and stipple in there, and he's using oil-based paints and stuff like that. Then it has to dry for 24 hours or, or, or whatnot. But if you make a mistake in that, right, you, you if you make a mistake, you can't eradicate that mistake without repainting like the red color or whatever. So, um, let me try to set this up so everybody can see as I do this. Like I say, I'm going to start with um, about I'm going to go about 25 pounds of air pressure. You don't have to buy one of these expensive compressors either. Yeah, starting out, I would go real expensive. Harbor Freight has one for 59 bucks. It works very well. But uh, as you get doing more and more and more, you find out that it's just not as good as, uh, as buying your really good quality. Um, these range from about $200 up. Um, one like this is probably going to be near $400. But it's, it's good and quiet. I can sit here in the room and you can hear how it is. That's it. Can hook up to a regular air compressor. Just make sure you have some way of reducing the air down um, to you know about 20 pounds, and that you have a water trap. And the reason why is we live in Missouri, or some of you might not, but we still live in the Midwest. And it is humid here, and as you paint, this seems to be picking up moisture. It's going to be probably moisture. A compressor like this comes with this setup. It comes with, with the, the cord hooking up, the, the moisture trap, the reducer, everything. So that's that's why I would say as you get more and more into this, and you find out the airbrush is really, really fun. And you don't have to do this saying, you know, everybody says, well, why do you have an airbrush? Are you doing any automobiles and stuff like that? We cosplay. We, you know, uh, we want to put extra details in it. We don't want to spend the hours and hours and hours with a brush detailing stuff out. Um, out of out of all you guys, know, how many have stopped by my or seen my booth out here with the costumes? <clears throat> Those costumes out there, the of course the the tall one that's that's about 30, 30 40 hours of airbrush work. But there's a lot of detail that you don't even see that's on the back. Um, the Wonder Woman costume, total paint job, absolute total start to finish paint job, including gold, the silver, everything, the weathering. Two and a half hours. So, and it, you, it's like, um, what was your name again? Kate. Kate. Um, Kate. Kate did this. This is one of her very first Wonder Woman costumes she's done. I'm very impressed with. Very good. Anytime you can, you can start out and you have this good of detail and quality. You're you're well on your way. So, but if you notice, this is all just red, and uh, there's. She's done some weathering on here, but it kind of disappeared because she was trying to get right in the line. I'm kind of hammering on you, but I'm, right. I'm, Go ahead. She, she's really nice. one of my new students now, and I'm teaching her some things because we set up the lace and stuff on the side. Now, um, to make this, let me 
this set up. And, and I'm using a straight black. And then I'll put about five drops in there. Can you see it on the camera? Mm -hmm. That's about all I put in there was about five drops. Right? I want to I want to break that color a little bit. I don't want I don't want it to be a stark black. And usually this is the rule. Always start with your lighter colors and add to it. But in this case, what we're doing weathering, all I want to do is I want to put like a almost a brown tint to the black. So it, it's more of a muddy color instead of a uh, straight color. And this is uh, a part number. That's another thing. In these bottles, you notice it's got that mixer. Don't come straight out of the bottle unless you mix it up. This one I was using earlier, and I've already mixed it up. But this one, you can't even hear the ball in it because it's it's got so much in it. I'm going to put about two drops of that in here. About 30%. Now, if you do this, <laughs> this cap, you, you can mix it up any way you want to. You can get a little stir stick or whatever and mix it in there. But these you can just, you know, shake to mix them up. That's one good thing about this water based paint. You can mix up them really easy. And then, now I'm going to have to let, I want to let it set for about 30 to 45 seconds. Because, you know, you want to make, make sure your paint settles. <clears throat> it's going to be, you, you've just mixed a whole bunch of air and, and stuff into it and agitated it around. Now you want to let it settle because it's kind of, and in other words, it's kind of like taking somebody and shaking and then saying, okay, go. <laughs> so always let it settle just a little bit. You'll, you'll find out your, your paints. Now, before I start on that, I'm going to show you a little bit of what I mean on your airbrushing. See that as I start that there's no paint coming out. As you start, can you see that? When you start to draw back, see that? You'll see the advantage right there? Or can you? Yep. Yeah. And that's what I mean. That's but see I'm doing it. the reason why I've got to mix so thin is because I'm actually doing a weathering. If I'm doing a solid paint but this is what the first thing I do is practice making these little dots and making them bigger and bigger and as you add to it this thing's going to do nothing but start getting darker and darker as you go and see there's no spidering on that and that's because I'm not It'll spider when you do this because I've got to mix so thin. I would practice that first in it is your dots. And if you start to spider, you want to paint too thin. Right. Um, and when you get it where it's not spider, not pushing out like that, then you're you're about right consistency. So and you can always add more paint to it if it's too thin or or just for it's too too thin. And you'll notice too thick because you start to gum up in your, in your nozzle. And this nozzle has a, a protector on the end. Because the needle is actually sticking out. And you see the needle there? It's right there. And that gets that gets a build up around. It. And it's easy to just clean it up. You know? um, even use a little bit of reducer and go straight into a rag. Don't wipe back and forth because that's a very fine tip needle and if you bend it, you're going to put airbrush on Now for doing weathering, you don't have to worry about staying right down in that groove because think about when something weathers, it doesn't weather just down in the groove, it's up on it. You know? So as you start to weather, you can make sure it's in an area you can Now, can you see how much change that's, that's doing? It's doing to that. Now, like I say, this this is the 
great part about this paint is if you don't like that or it's too much or whatever, take a, a little little bit of your reducer, a slight bit of your reducer, and then you can just clean it off. You can't do that with an oil paste paint. You know, if you clean it off, you're going to have to clean it off with a with a thinner, and your thinner is probably going to mess with your paint underneath. So if you mess up, it's no big deal. What I want to do is um, get each one of you guys to experience and feel that how this works with an airbrush. That's all you have to do is just line everything out. Can you guys see the difference in that? Yeah. So, and then. Also, you can. Um, now I'm going to show you just a little trick on doing some of the battle damage and taking an extended out from the battle damage that she has on this. Um, so can you guys see these little marks that are right in here? Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, just three little cut lines that she's done for battle damage. And I want to do I want to do an extension of that. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a card and I'm going to stay mostly up on on the paper. Now can you see what that did for battle damage? It may be easier to see it up here. That's, that's all it was, was I used the card to make a straight line and I painted up on the card and let the overspray hit the, hit the costume. That way you're not putting too much. And, and there is no, especially when you're weathering something like this, there is no right or wrong way to weather. Um, you can go totally dark with it, but or you can go lighter. Another thing, I mean, uh, is there a paintbrush over there? This is another reason why I like to use the Createx paints. Is because not only can you use them in a in an airbrush, you can use a regular paintbrush to create your detail. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, a white line and then I'm gonna put a shadow under. You guys can see those white lines. Mm -hmm. this, this is like something's raised up or pulled up on the costume. And you take and you cover the white line partially. And you're going to put a shadow underneath it. See how that? Now that's where you start to get your dimension, your three dimension. So, um, I'm going to actually finish this off for her after our panel, but uh, I'm going to show how it's going to change one of these areas right now uh, because that's a, it's a lot of beautiful gold, yes, but it, unless you want it to be just a straight color, um, weathering is the way to change the whole look of it. You guys can't ask questions too while I'm doing this. I, when I was learning how to do weathering and stuff, uh, you have to get it out of your head like, oh, it has to look perfect. No, no, it doesn't. That's not how weathering happens. So if it looks if you're like, oh, it doesn't look right, it probably does. If you leave like if something rusts over, it's not it's not completely rust. Parts of it do it, or it, it a little crappy. In movies, when someone that, has someone with a sword and blood splatters across them. It's not just one area. It's so once I got that into my head a little bit, I'm like, oh, it has to look perfect. No, it doesn't. So get messy with the world.
about washing. So if you use it on a washable garment, since it's water. Okay, a washable garment, you're going to have to use a setter on. Okay. And I know Createx has another line that that is more for washable garments. They, they have a range of paints. And I'm, like I say, I'm not a salesman for Createx paint, but this 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 paint you can use on this. And I've got a good friend, his name is Jason Brookshire. I don't know if anybody's heard of him, but look him up. It's B Street Paintworks. He is my teacher. He's the one that, that taught me how to airbrush. He's the one that helped me with my biggest costume out there and, and showed me how easy it was to put extreme detail with just a little bit of a little bit of work. Um, like I say, it's B Street Paintworks. He's in Joplin, Missouri. And he paints uh, every one of the V8 choppers, um, tracks. Every single one of them. They send him the pieces, he paints them, puts them back together, sends them back to buy them. And it's beautiful. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, they are absolutely stunning. And uh, this is all he uses. And he teaches four classes a year down in uh, Texas um, that's called Airbrush Art Surface and he teaches them panels like this. They, they go in for a week and they, they, by the end of it they've all got beautiful pieces that they have painted themselves. And people think they couldn't ever do this. He gives them the simple steps of how you can do it. Now when it comes down to painting like skulls and stuff like that, you're going to have to do a lot of practice. And uh, the, with anything if you start airbrushing for the first time, don't go after your prize piece and start airbrushing. Do a lot of practice. Find something that you can practice on and uh, do new steps. And then you'll find different things that you can do that, that's just amazing how, how much different. I think there, there's a lot of patterns in there, isn't there? Yeah, there's three. We will finish this up. Okay. okay. But, like house. They're like, awesome. Why are skulls really so hard? Getting the things out. They're easy to they, they have stencil that you can paint the main skull. And I'm talking about the painting skulls on something, not painting a skull. You know, painting, I'm talking about the other one. Painting something that's already a skull, yeah, that's just you know, that's just what I'm doing here. It's whether it's changing colors of, of different but if you're painting, you're actually painting a whole bunch of skulls on something, or skull and flames or whatever, then, uh, you know, that, that's what I mean by being difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white on here so I, you guys can see it. And this one I'm going to go straight paint. There's, there's not going to be any reducer on it because I want to cover it. I'm going to cover it like this. I also, at home, on my uh, pen set, I've got uh, air manifold, which has 16 different ports on it, so I don't have to sit here and change back and forth. But this still runs the whole manifold. So I've got different colors, different guns set up with different colors. That way I can unclip one and put it onto another. What I'm going to do is a simple stencil work on this one using the black. Um, so, when I'm painting the stencil of this honeycomb, I'm not going to paint just the whole thing, all the edges and everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the underneath side, which is, is my shadows. I'm not going to go very dark at all on this. But I don't even think you guys can hardly see the difference right now. It's very simple and it, I would use very little paint on it. Because you don't need to have a stark line. And you can come back uh, with the same stencil. And I mentioned highlights and shadows because you notice uh, there's still a lot of gray in that area where I painted, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kill that black that I put in there because it's just a shadow up above. Uh, 
When I did the first color, I didn't care if that stencil looked because that, you know, I knew I was going to come back with a different color on top. Mm -hmm. And this, this one, you almost want to go straight down on it. Um, don't, again, don't try to put too much paint on it all. That's where the biggest mistake is, in airbrushing is trying to, to over glorify something. Now I've determined that this side here is my shadow. So now the under the side. Now it starts to look professional. It's gets a 3D effect too. And you can go back and forth and detail more of your lines, get more of your black lines, get your double lines black. Um, and what I did with the weathering on the, the suit for making a, a mark across it like a highlight um, reflection light. Um, you can do the same with one of these after you get it painted. Just come in with your. And I'm staying up on the paper. Now you see the reflection lines? Like I say, you can go back and forth on this and. Uh, a volunteer to come up and, and try. You want to try it? Sorry. <laughs> Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook you up with black first. Alright? And what I, want, what I want to do is have you first on this piece of paper right here. I'm going to have you do it the other way. So. <laughs> I just want you to have the kind of get the feel. And like I say, as you push down first, air starts to flow. The old soul now, don't, don't stop your air flow first. Because paint's not coming out the back until you draw back. And then as you draw back, you don't have to draw back. You just start drawing back until it starts to paint. What I want you to do is try to do... You calm with it. It's, it's okay. The camp has up. Okay. All right? Uh, try, to, try to get yourself level on it. All right? And then just draw back to where you start seeing the paint coming. And you can you can practice making different size dots, and don't be nervous. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's always really no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Now get a, get a little bit closer. That way you can get a smaller dot. Get a little closer to the paper. Just pull back until you see pain up here and then let go. There you go. And that's what I would do first is, is practice dots and lines. You know, you're, uh, doing uh, lines, if you, if you practice making a fine line, you can do heavier lines. Those are the things, dots, lines, and circles. Now, if you're going to do a big area of a circle, do not move your wrist. Because <laughs> this is what it's doing, it's fanning that paint. What you want to do is move your elbow. Then you can make a perfect circle. Wrist is like this, and it's it just that you're going to get an egg shape, you're going to get more paint down here, more paint up here, and that on the sides. You know? But if you hit something and you start a circular motion on it, where you're moving your whole arm in that circular motion. Not, not everybody uh, is an artist, but everybody has an artistic ability. Just find out what yours is. Right? Um, it's, uh, I've got former <laughs> students here that, can you show them the shield that you built? 
She built this shield in one of my classes. And, uh, I highly recommend it. If you can take it, so take it. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, these people, uh, it's what I do this morning. It's absolutely uh, just the joy of my life to, to come in and, and have a room full of people build something. We, have, we built 37 shields at one time. Uh, Jason yeah. and John, I met them in my con, I, I think it's going on three years ago now, something like that. And JC had a costume on that was just, it just was so detailed and so perfect as far as symmetry and everything. And when I went up and talked to him, they said, she said that it was the first one she ever built. And I was just like, and we've been friends ever since. They, they've helped me. Uh, you remember this? Very uh, helpful. They, they, <laughs> they are, they're the ones that take care of all the students when I'm jumping from place to place to place. So um, I know this was kind of a brief uh, panel. I was hoping to have a bigger room. I, I don't want to do a lot of painting in here because there still is a few involved. And, but this is safer than any type of world based painting. So I'm going to kind of open for questions or if somebody else wants to come try making some, some lines, fill an airbrush. You know, a lot of people want to start airbrushing, but they don't even know what this thing feels like when they start. It. So, and you say you do textiles? Uh, yes, I'm a, actually a costume designer, so I use the airbrush for when I'm painting in sweat stains and any damage, like the weathering. Yes, yeah, that. that's perfect. Um, one thing that, that on that um, little trick that I use, especially on material, mm -hmm. is after I use the Createx paint, what I seal it with is, <coughs> of all things, Turtle Wax Spray Detailer. And it sets it in, I, who was at Route 66 parade last year? Can you, is anybody here? Well, Bruce, okay, Route 66 Parade, we come here, um, we've got storms coming in. I'm in my jor costume, 150-hour uh, build costume, and it's getting darker and darker, and it comes down to downpour. I'm sitting in a convertible. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, exactly, the water just... <laughs> and I didn't lose a bit of paint, nothing, it just came up. We did yeah, the same thing with the here. shield. I walked in in the rain this morning and it looks perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's one thing. The only thing is, is once you seal it out with turtle wax, this is no longer, and you can no longer paint on top of it. You know, you, can, I, you can't even wash it out. I mean, it's, I've tried to wash them down with like alcohol and stuff like that, degreasers, whatever. And there's always that one or two spots where there's still turtle wax on and you know, it'll be stored out. So. so then you technically have to use two different brushes. Like you have to use two different pipes for your airbrush. So one for the actual painting, one for your turtle waxing? No, the turtle wax comes in a spray bottle. It's oh, like okay. a Windex thing. So it's yeah. The stuff you use on your car? Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's just a spray detail. <laughs> oh, okay. And the re reason why I like the turtle wax oh. ice is because <laughs> it, it, you can put it on any material and it doesn't show up at all. It, it, it gives you a little bit of shine to it, um, you know, but it's not like a gloss or anything like that. Uh, something like this, uh, a costume like this, uh, all it would do is accent his colors, and that's it. But like I say, if you plan on doing further painting or detailing or weathering or whatever, I wouldn't do the wax until you're, you're satisfied that that is the end product. That, our piece that I sent around that has that has uh, turtle wax on it. Wow! And like I said, this people wonder how I do this. This is such an easy process, and I, I would suggest getting online and looking at it. And if, if you, especially if you do cosplay, um, for learn how to paint flesh tone. It's so simple, absolutely just simple. You know, uh, I had. Uh, oranges to white, purple to that, darken it down, and to get those different colors. That's all the colors that are in here, is orange, white, and purple. And, um, but experience, now, the reason why I say you need to do this, if you do uh, cosplay, you can trans trans take this color, and do any color you can do, the Hulk you can do, Mira you can do, anything that, that's, that's different than our flesh tone. 
okay? And it's not, you start with flesh tone, you paint the whole thing a flesh tone just like this, and then you tint it with the transparent, the translucent paints, the color it is. And you don't cover the whole thing. That's the thing, is people think they have to cover the whole thing green. And some of the best folks that I've seen are flesh tone with green tones on top. Their highlights are green. But when you see it, visually when you see it, it's all green. But it's still got the purples and everything else in, in your, all of your shadowing. So, like I said, there's some great tutorials out there on painting flesh tones. Um, learn to make like rivets or something like that if you really want to get into this. Watch the YouTube videos. There's some great ones on rivets, on shadowing. Um, if you're really, really brave, you can try uh, doing some flame work or something like that. The real flames, there's so many good tut tutorials on that. But the dots and the straight lines is what I would practice with. I'd get an easel and a big sheet of paper and I'd just make dots. Make dots. And then lines. Start with your line. And get used to what you're doing when you um, hand a line on this. Because see these, these big marks at the end of these lines right here? This is because when I came out to the end of the line, I didn't release my paint. And you don't have to release the air, you just, as you're painting along at the end, you keep your motion, but you push forward on, the, on that, so it stops the paint. So now, instead of a dot, you have a dash. And it, it takes that line and stops it, instead of coming in with a dot. So. So, I'm going to open it up for a few more questions and then we're going to wrap this one up. I apologize for the set of time because they ran over the last panel. Um, still not blaming them because they're like me. I've got people who want to know more after, after the panel's done. But my booth is literally right out there. And I'm going to set this back up at my booth. So if you guys want to come over and experience, experience it, uh, I've already got a couple colors mixed up. We'll, we'll try some airbrushing. So. Yes. For a beginner, uh, I want to make a very nice I want to eclipse. Um, it's about $129. Now, if that's above your budget, uh, they do have some some cheaper ones at like Hobby Lobby, uh, starting around $39. Uh, I would go with the dual action though. Seriously. Um, if you're painting, like I said, if you're painting big objects, whatever, that you one color, you're not going to put much detail, single action is fine. But when you push down, it's going to start to flow paint. And it, you know, it's not, a, it's not like these where you push down, the air starts flowing. As, it, as, I, as I push down on that, air starts flowing. There's no paint, absolutely no paint coming out whatsoever. And I never release that air, I just start, start painting my color. Like I said, it's until it's like that. So I would say um, a general range of a cheaper airbrush, seventy-nine dollars, and a cheap airbrush, Harbor Freight, fifty-nine dollars. Um, I would still go with the good paints. Um, these, you can get a pretty good range of the Createx paints at Hobby Lobby, but some like this, this one right here is probably going to be four to six bucks. And you think that's a lot of money, but I, I still haven't replaced a color in here in the last two years. I've still got paints, and uh, I do a lot of airbrushing. So, anyway. Thank you guys. Um, what is the name of the airbrush? The first one. Iwata. Iwata. Uh huh. Iwata Eclipse is what it's called. <laughs> kind of a strange name. But. And then what's funny is this one right here is a three hundred fifty dollar airbrush, <laughs> but it's this one's for uh, actually cosmetic makeup. And uh, I love this thing because it it, it for the little cup forces me in my mind not to use too much paint. The only thing is you got to watch because there's no cap to it. So uh, if you're going to be painting up on an angle or whatever, this is for more painting upright. But um, 
that that's a kit with an airbrush and it's those, those things are super expensive. And I use this for my highest detail. I can do the finest line with this. So that's a base like a, a makeup airbrush. Yeah, it's a makeup airbrush. Do you ever use the airbrush with the little breast I do. And the only thing I, I don't like about that, especially with the Createx paints, that's the other thing that that kind of keeps me away from it. That's great for your oil-based paints and stuff like that because the thinner, it's it's easier for a pickup, you know, because that's what it's doing, it's drawing up. You know, it's not, it's, this is a gravity fed. You know. um, I, I do have one at home though that has the bottle of the boat. And it's still gravity feed. And that, I, with the others that pick up feed, a little bit of extra thinner, a little bit of extra paint in that too. And all of a sudden your line has a dash in it that has nothing in it. And it's just a second like that. And so that's kind of why I like the gravity feeds. And I started out with a really, really cheap $29 airbrush. And I beat myself up until I met Jason. And I walk into Jason and he's got, he's got 40 I want airbrushes set up. And he's doing uh, a, like a Scooby-Doo van or something like that. I'm telling you. As a matter of fact, let me, let me see if I can, um, I should be able to pull his work up. This is his work here. Oh my God. Holy cow. And this is my teacher, so I've got a good teacher. <laughs> but that's... Wow. And that's what I mean. He, and the only thing he uses is an I want airbrush. That's it. And, create, and these are all Createx paints. Uh, automotive paints. And I really look him up, and he loves to chat with people online. So if you've got a question, um, you can usually find him on Facebook. And, and say, you know, I met Bruce Holt. He, he said that you were his teacher. Um, Bruce ain't very good, but I want to learn more. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm still pretty much in the, the first learning stages of, of airbrushing of work. But my work is out there at my booth. You can see what I've done. It's increased, it increasingly better all the time. So anyway, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing I have to say is, wow. You know, I know that uh, certain cosplayers will use airbrush mm -hmm. techniques. I, I, I know a little bit about the whole airbrush, you know, piece in the cosplay world. Yeah. But I never realized how perfectly it works to weather things it like really the, the Wonder yeah. Woman mm -hmm. piece. Or using colors that you don't think of using like that white it's like really you're gonna put white on there but it worked out so well i mean it's just impressive the things that you know you can do with paints and you know airbrushing is no different and he had a lot of fantastic tips especially if you're new to the whole airbrushing thing uh for one how little paint you yes. use in the airbrush yeah. and talking about how much he's done obviously mm -hmm. and how long those paints last because he did point out the cost of the paints but these are things that will last months yeah. on end yeah it was it was totally impressive i of course i mean it, working on a wonder woman costume made me <laughs> that, very excited that sold too you from yeah. the start. <laughs> Something really nice, I really wanted to shout out the fact that they had that monitor set up yes. to get that close-up image of what he was doing. Yeah. That worked so well. I really hope that they continue to do that. And as far as shout outs, just the fact that the airbrush machine, the compressor, was so quiet. Yeah, and that small, very me. nice and easy to take with you so that if you need to do some touch-ups at the convention, you've got it right there because it was nice and small. Um, one of the things that I liked about it that you wouldn't necessarily think of was he was, you know, some of his techniques he was trying to explain. Right. Like, make sure that air is going first and then do the paint, push the button for the paint and then stop with the paint and then stop the air. I never would have thought of that. Or the uh, the dots, doing the mm -hmm. different sizes mm -hmm. of dots kind of to get that feel before you actually start on the painting. Yeah. So yeah, there were tons of great yeah, tips right so there. Yeah, so many great tips. 
Now, of course, I am going to leave links to Bruce in the description down below, and he loves to teach. He does. So I don't think there's really much of an issue if you wanted to reach nope. out to him about any questions because he just he loves talking to people. He does. He's this. so easy to talk to, and he's so helpful and so forthcoming. So all right. Hit that like button if you happen to like the video. Leave some comments down below. Let us know if you are cosplayers and you've ever tried airbrushing anything yourself or even if you learned something new from this video. Hopefully you did because that is exactly what these panels are all about at conventions. And of course, hit the notification bell. Be sure you subscribe because there are more VisionCon videos on the way. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so that you can see more Vision Con coming your way. Hit us up over there on TeePublic because we got merch and we want to see you in them. And remember, nerdlings, if we like it, we nerd it. For one good night.